Hey, yo, Internets, you tune into the Combat Jack Show, CombatJackShow.com. What's up, AK? 2017, baby. Yo, man, um, 2016 was like that bad relative, man, that kept giving us gifts that none of us fucking wanted, man. <laughs> I'm so glad we're so close to the end of this year, man. I'm so glad that, you know, we, we survived it. I'm saying we, we we thrive through it. It's been an amazing year for the network. Shout out to everybody on the network. You yep. know what I'm saying? Um, what else, man? What are we talking about, man? Yo, shout out to the listeners, the supporters, yes, the people who constantly give us the the opinions and the critique, yes, it's positive or whatever it is. We salute you, man. Just keep the voicemail popping. You be you reading. Know? You be reading the comments. I love it, man. You love the comments. Yeah, this is with one dude, the anonymous caller who won't reveal his phone number. The same dude. Yo, he's he's brilliant, but he just, I think he think we're going to run up in his crib or something, man. Yo, we got to, like I said, I, man, we, you got to produce a segment for yo, him, Yo, it would be dope, man. You I know? think he, he's dope, man. Yeah. Yo, please, unblock your number. Yo, last week was special, man. Thanks to the locks for coming through. LOX. LOX, man. That was wild, man. Like, you know, when they started talking about voting, hmm. like, you know what I'm saying? We, were talk, we talked about everything, beefs, everything, and they got hot. Hot. When we talked about voting... Yeah, Yo, was... shout out Styles, man. Styles, you Styles wild, man. Love you, my dude. <laughs> Sheik Jada, what's up, man? Um, let's jump into it, man. We we got a very special guest in here. Yes. Um, you know this guy, man. I mean, I, I don't even know what to say, man. Like like part of a revolution that inspires so many people mm-hmm. across the country, across the world. You know, not only that, empowered so many people. When you hear this man talk about how many people, not even just the the artists, but how many people are empowered. Because of the institution that they create. Yo, let's welcome to the Combat Jack show, Mr. Kareem Biggs Burke. Yeah. Oh, man. Thanks for having me, fellas. How you feeling, man? I'm feeling great, man. Better than before. Yeah, you're better than before, right? <laughs> Are you smiling? You, you look very comfortable, man. Yeah, I am. Congratulations, man, on the, on the 20th anniversary, man. Thank you, man. Thanks. I appreciate that. How's that feel, man? 20 years. Uh, uh, feels great. Um, you know, looking back and seeing all the all the things like you just said that's been creative in that time, and to see all these people have great success, it's a good thing, man. We really bust down some doors so people could come could, could run through. Did you imagine twenty years ago that 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 this would be like etched in American history, not even hip hop history, American history? No, it's crazy. No. And you know, we set out to you know to create history and be a part of history, but when it happens, it's something different. You know, when you're there celebrating at the time, saying, wow, look what we did. You know, it's one thing to look forward, but now to look back, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's really amazing. It's an interesting thing and when, when you start moving forward. Like, it's mm-hmm. so important to always move, even if you don't know if success is guaranteed or not. Mm-hmm. And you go through the ups and the downs, and you run, and you run, and you run, and then you look back. And you'd be like, yo, we, we did this? Yeah. It's hard to see the importance, especially when you're in it. Right. It's like, you know, when I took that time, uh, you know, after we sold and I kind of removed myself from the music business and then to see how people were celebrating and um, really loved the movement, you know, you kind of got a, a little bit of picture. You know, when Jay did some albums outside of, you know, Rockefeller and did things under his own umbrella, you got to see, you know, from the outside looking in. And I got to appreciate it that way, you know, like with albums like American Gangster and things like that that he's did, um, which is... Uh, probably right there up with reasonable doubt, you right. know, you, um, as far as I'm concerned. Right, you always bring up American yeah. Gangsta. Is that, yeah. is that, is that like, in, in terms of yeah. all the albums, what number is that for you in terms of? 1B. Like, 1B. 1B. Yeah. And, 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 and reasonable doubt is? 1A. You know, let's do it backwards. <laughs> we usually do this at the end mm-hmm. of the show. What are your top five uh, rock, rock albums? Um, well, reasonable doubt, uh, American Gangsta, after, um, Beanie Siegel. Mm. Uh, Which one? Which one? The Reason. Mm. Uh, Cameron's album as well. The and first one? I, yeah. The first one we put out. And then um, probably be the, the Blueprint. Mm. So that's, 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 pretty, yeah. that's, that's pretty solid. I can't argue with you. Yeah. Yo, tell us about um, Rock 96. Yeah, so that that all got created from you know this celebratory uh, uh, things that we've been doing and um, thinking about the past and how we're going to push forward and you, you know rock took over everything right you know it was rock aware rock this rock sports uh, uh, <laughs> MP3 players we had the rock box rock box <laughs> so you know we kind of decided that we would take over 1996 you know so it'd be rock 96 mm. and. 
it's it's something that's going to be like a hub um, and it's, it's going to be a, a line of merch. And under that, there'll be, um, you know, separate uh, separate clothing lines under it. Um, Rock 96 will probably be a film division as well. Mm. Um, it's just something else that we created that we think that um, that'll be the next movement um, moving forward. But 1996 is really um, what we it's going to be the company. That's crazy how you're able to recycle mm -hmm. that year and keep it moving forward. Yeah. I mean, 1996 was a great time. Yes. I think of the score. Mm. It was written. Uh, uh, Outcast came out. Uh, All Eyes on Me, I think. Um, you know, it was yeah. a great 1996 was a great time. Yeah, it was heavy back then, yeah. too, man. Everybody sold records. So. Everybody sold records, yeah. man. It's a great time to celebrate, right? Yeah, so no doubt. People like heritage, right? They like to be a part of something that was, that's was that been out and something that's, you know, in the longevity. So 1996 is going to be something that people are going to really recognize. And, and we, we had a lot of surprises with that. We live in a great time, too, especially those of us who lived it, because I never thought, like, hip-hop was always about pushing. Mm-hmm. The older cats out, yeah. But but 2016, 2015, going into 2017, like the 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 the, the premium that is our that, that's our experience, that's our history. How cat like yeah. it's 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 become like this. It's become so marketable, man. Yeah. Well, the lifespan, you know, back then was three albums, right? Yes. Two, three albums. Two and, and a half, even. Yeah. And there was only a few then that um, probably went past LL. LL. Um, Will Smith. Yes. You know, um, reinventing himself. Um, Run DMC, they had like five five albums? Yeah. But, you know, to do what Jay's doing right now is incredible. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. How I was mean, Jay doing, man? He's doing good. Yeah. How was his birthday celebration? Um, I, I spoke to him earlier that day. Me and Emery actually shot out to Boston. We, you know, we had work to do. Right. So we just, you know, shot him some um, happy birthday emails and, you know, laughed with him. But, uh, you know, we were working. Yo, is the laughter the same? Because when you look back, yeah, yeah. like I used to hate coming to the Rockefeller office. Because <laughs> Dane would cut ass. Uh, and, and I, yeah. you know, I was mm -hmm. thin-skinned back then. Mm -hmm. So I'd be like, <sighs> yeah. like every time me and Ed Woods had to go to the yeah, office, yeah. we would take a breath. Yeah, no matter who was walking through that door, you know you was heading into something. Yeah. Yeah, but it, it, it's it's still the same, and it's funny because uh, a lot of people ask me uh, before I seen Jay, um, Dame, or any of anybody. It's like, what would be the first thing you guys would probably do or say to each other? I said the first thing would probably be we laugh, and I seen him uh, first at the Kanye's listening um, event at the Garden. So I walked in there, and I didn't know he was going to be there. My right. my boy Stevie actually called me. I was coming from a meeting at Vice, and he was like, come on. And G. Robeson called to said, look, we got somebody in the side door. Just come on, come on. So it was early. I was like, all right, this is 5, 6 o'clock. I'll be home by 9 o'clock and get this over with. So I walked in, and um, Jay was one of the first people I seen. And we just looked at each after, other. After how long? Um, I think maybe six or seven years. Wow. And we just bust out laughing. <laughs> that's dope man yeah we just laugh we laugh and you know he's like hafa what's up and you know he was there with um Juan and a couple other guys and we all just laughed man was happy to see each other and then kanye um i feel a tap on my shoulder and i turn around and kanye gives me this big hug and um thanks me for coming right um you know thanks for the support and you know i told him how proud of him i was and and we, you know, we talked for a little bit, and it was funny because he's he was telling me he was like, "Look, I know what you're doing with the Fourth of November. I'm gonna come uh, support." And I'm looking at him like, "How the hell he know this? We just had an event, but right. you know, I actually think that came from my boy Joan Ihorn. Um, shout out to him and Fancy. Okay, how's Kanye doing, man? Have Have you heard any? I haven't heard from him, from him since he came out the hospital. Right. I reached out to him um, through uh, T Mills and told him that you know the you know, to have him reach out that, you know, I was praying for him that I hoped everything was good. Yeah, man. Yeah. You know, Kanye's is, 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 is an amazing individual. Individual, yeah. man. Yeah. Like, you know, that, you know, he's an individual, yeah. right? You can't say that. He's an amazing individual, <laughs> man. You know, he, all, you One know, of a kind. I was going to say he, you know, he's very, um, he's always very truthful. You can't ever be mad at somebody mm -hmm. that's truthful. But looking back at the history of the rock, a, a quality that made y'all very special truthful. was that. For his feelings. Yeah. Yeah, for his feelings. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what made y'all amazing as a label is that all your artists mm -hmm. spoke the truth. Yeah. You know, Clark, you know, DJ Clark Kent used to always tell me Jay-Z doesn't lie on a record. Yeah. And he doesn't, he doesn't give you much, right? Uh, you know, Jay's done tons of interviews. It's, 
it's like, man, this guy's really not saying nothing, but when he gets on the record, he's an open book. Right. So you always know what's going on in his life from, you know, whatever stories he's telling on the, on his record. You know, and, you know, these 12, 13 albums he have, you can see him growing as an individual, you know, from early on, talking about not smoking weed to smoking weed yeah. to once in a while to being on wine to the yachts and saint Pay and traveling and just seeing the world. Um, you always kind of know what spaces he's in. Even it's, when he's falling in love, like yeah. when he did Bonnie and Clyde, we knew right there he fell in love. Yeah, he's right there, right? Yeah, right there. <laughs> yeah. We, we heard it in Paris. Me and uh, they sent the uh, the song to us, and me and Dame was at the Plaza Atene, and James looked at me and said, "Rewind that back." Oh shit, he's in love. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, man. Yeah. That's crazy. Yo, you know one of the things that bothers me because um, artists like Jay are so truthful. It actually made me upset that a lot of people didn't enjoy Kingdom Come. Because mm-hmm. I thought that was one of his most truthful mm-hmm. albums for where he was at that time, mm-hmm. and maybe the audience wasn't there. But like when I listened to the, I listened to the album two, two, like two weeks ago, and I was mm-hmm. like, "Yo, how do people not appreciate that he's going through this phase? He's not." A it kid was definitely anymore. a phase. I think he's not. I believe that was the first album he did without me and Dan. Yeah, that's crazy. Man. Yeah, so it was that de- right. Yeah. So, Talking about Muhammad, Muhammad Hovi on the ropes. <laughs> <laughs> they had me on the ropes. <laughs> Yo, um, I didn't know you were so instrumental in, um, in in Kanye's career. Yeah. Yeah, at that time, Dame um, spent a lot of time at Rock Aware, and uh, Jay was doing some S.I. Carter and spent a time at Rock Aware and some other brands as well. So I kind of took the, um, the helms over at Rockefeller. So I did everything from A to Z. And um, actually, Kanye, well, Young Guns was the first project I did. I broke that record. You know, that ended up being one of the biggest records we ever had at Rockefeller, um, like 10,000 spins. Um, we Can't Stop, Won't Stop. And then Kanye was next. And through the wire, you know, I hired Don't Think Twice. Um, shout out to my man, John. And, you know, we chased the record. I, I remember clearly it was uh, Virginia and D.C. where we was getting like 20 spins and we knew we had something. Took it back to Lior, said, um, yo, look, we got something big. And he's like, look, I don't care about that shit. Take it somewhere else. Oh. You know, we end up going to another label. We say, yo, these guys are idiots. We might as well keep it there, which was probably our biggest mistake because we could have had Kanye sign under us right. up to this day. So being that he went back, he was under the old formula. And we, at that time, we had just an, ex- we sold the company, but they did a three-year extension. So we were still under that formula. So the only thing is, you know, with his um, record sales, we can push, you know, the, uh, you know, um, the multiple up, you know, depending on how many uh, records um, we would sell. But he wouldn't be on, you know, after the that transition, he would go under that right. jam. That's crazy. When he started telling you that he was going to rap, what'd you think, man? Well, no, well, I heard the record. So Kanye will come and play stuff for Beans and for Jay and then play his own songs. But I spent more time in the studio, uh, so I would be there all the time while he would just play song after song after song and after song. So Dame actually thought, look, we can take this album and put everybody on Rockefeller on it and kind of make it look like a mixtape, like a Clue um, record. And I was like, nah, you don't understand. This guy got something special. He's bigger than that. you know. And I seen how animated he was, how um, you know he would jump on the tables in the studio room and rap every record until you know the sound goes off and keep going and playing song after song and he had a vision he had the name for his next three albums mm. <laughs> that's great that time yeah. right how'd you singles see, and everything how'd you see past the image though because during the new millennium kanye was so different that's why. from 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 every other rapper that's why it made sense yeah Everything we try to do, we, we was trying to push the envelope and be the first to do something different. He had that sound. You know, he was truthful about what he was saying, right? It was the same thing that Beans was, that Cam was, and what Jay was, but he was just talking about something different. Right. And we thought, well, at least for me, I knew that the people needed to hear that. Like, who who, who, who even talks about dropping out of college? Yeah, exactly. In, in hip-hop at the time. Exactly. But, the you know, with the sounds and the samples that he used and, the, you know, and the, the drums, the 808s and, you know, how it came across. You know, I mean, through the wire. I mean, we talk, I mean, how can, that's one of the greatest records for him to have that car accident rap while his mouth was wired shut. Crazy. <laughs> You know, we had to pay for MPC to, to, to you know, to, to send it out there to him just so he could, you know, record it. You know, Kanye is funny because he would call me all the time and talk about, uh, hey, Biggs, man, how do you 
how do you make more than a million dollars? Like I keep making money, but I don't know how to keep it. <laughs> yep. So we would talk about a lot. I mean, even Jesus walks, right. you know, I thought that was genius too. And um, I had to convince him not to put that out as a second single because I knew all falls down was going to be that crossover record right. that would take us there. And then Jesus walk would just be just like something that just break down the doors and then doing, he did a different video for BT and MTV. I mean, he had everybody going crazy changing the video three or four times, you know, editing. He's in there. Like, he's a part of every bit of his project. Right. It's crazy because when, and I've said this often on the show, my kids, like, you know, my son's 19, 18, and 15, like, they see the lens different. Like, when I play old stuff for them, mm -hmm. like, yo, Dad, why were y'all so violent? You know what I'm saying? Why yeah. were y'all so wild? Like, mm -hmm. why is everybody getting shot? So in their, in, in their, in their view... Mm -hmm. they see hip-hop as being before Kanye and after Kanye. They see, you know, oh, from okay. what they've heard. Okay. They're like, yo, Kanye really changed the game. Oh, yeah. But when you look back, like, it's, it's this new generation, is, they're all sons of Kanye. Mm. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, like, before Kanye, that's like BC? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, how's married life, man? Congratulations, man. Thank you, man. It's great. Yeah, 18 months. Um, I legally got married on November 4th. I've been married for 18 months now. Um, it's great. It's the first thing you did when you came out, right? Very first thing I did. Um, yep, first day. Now, you, you, you were dating your wife for a long time. Yeah, uh, we, we, it was a period of time where we weren't together. Right. When my son was about five years old. Right. Um, for maybe, I don't know, uh, eight years. We, had, um, we spent some time apart, and then we had got back together. You know, when, when people fall in love... You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, when initially fall in love, like the courting period, the dating period, yeah. even the arguments are still mm -hmm. hot. Yeah. But you've been with your lady off and off for such a long time. Yeah. How do you know 22 she 22 years. 22 years. When did it click um, that in prison. this is the one? In prison. Um, well, we were together, but I was my mind was still at a different um, place. It wasn't until I got saved. And it was actually some books that I read, um, Sacred Marriage and The Meaning of Marriage by Tim Keller was the thing that kind of put me over the top. Um, I knew when I came home, um, you know, I wanted to solidify it. I didn't want to uh, do anything that would be sexually immoral. Right. So I wanted to make sure I was married first. That's good, man. Yeah. How's it feel, though? Like, how's 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 this life, even even being saved? Um, well, I was, that's the, probably the biggest difference. Um, you know, our relationship is, you know, you know, even though that it's, uh, you know, it's legal now and, you know, we got married under the covenant, you know, of God. But I don't think our relationship has changed that much because we have so much history. But um, being saved is, is, is a lot different. You know, I, I value relationships. Um, it's a lot of things that I look at um, through different lens. Right. It's all through a spiritual lens now. And not to say I'm not a fallible human being still and I don't make mistakes, but um, it's just you know, I, I try a lot more. You know, I do a lot of things that's different um, than the past. How was that process like to get to that point? Um, well, what, what happened was I actually, uh, a good friend of mine, my, uh, one of my best friends, uh, Chip, I went to speak to him about business one day. And for six hours, he talked to me about the Lord. Mm. And that night, I couldn't stop thinking about it. And when I talked to him about it the next day, he invited me to his room. This is all in prison. And um, we started to read scripture. Um, we started to fellowship together, um, read Oswald Chambers devotionals. And, uh, um, you know, I read a lot of books, spent a lot of time with him. And, you know, my heart and my mind began to change. That's amazing, man. That's amazing. Um, you know, going back to The Rock, you, 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 you've always been a businessman, mm. always made money. Yeah. Right. Before we get to that question, like, what's your relationship with money? <laughs> um, I think uh, I'm I'm more happy about b starting a new business. It's not so much about the money that I'm making from it, but it's being successful about whatever um, it is I put my mind to. It's not all about being um, rewarded for it. Um, I'm at this point, especially I'm more happy if my team is rewarded, uh, you know, or, if, you know, I could open doors for somebody else. It's just that uh, I'm competitive and um, I'm probably – obsessive compulsive like anything i do i mean i'm all in 100 percent. you know i can't stop and i have a lot of stamina so the more i do something it's like the hulk you know the angrier he gets the more he fights yeah, the, the stronger, stronger he gets, gets yeah that's how it is with me with business i remember um when the rock was signed in memphis mm -hmm. 
And I handed Damon a standard contract. And after Bleak's lawyer read it, he was like, Dame came and was like, yo, take the publishing out. Yeah. He's like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to jerk him. I was like, yo, it's not jerking him because when I represent artists, I always tell them to keep their publishing. And when I represent a label, I always tell them, get the publishing, right? Mm -hmm. What made it such, um, why was it so important for The Rock to be so good to their artists contractually when, you know, most, if not every other label was doing the same old stuff? We didn't want to be what every label was. We right. we were trying to breed entrepreneurs. We were trying to teach um, teach them how to make money and how to build their own businesses and how they can make money outside of music. So Dame has been um, before that in some terrible deals, um, you know, with the original flavor and future sounds. And he's seen how the you know the record companies was jerking the artists, and that was one of the first things we talked about how we would be different and. You know, we knew there was enough money for us. We didn't need to take anyone's publishing. Right. Um, you know, and, and that went all the way through. I mean, artists, all they would still come to us and offer for us to buy their publishing. We're like, no, no, no. Wait till this song come out. This is how you do it. We'll hook you up with, you know, with all these, uh, you know, with Sony and everybody else. And um, you can get your own publishing deal. And this is how you can build and, you know, clothing and films and all these things that we were doing. We would just open the doors and let them just walk through. Did they know how fortunate they were? Did they appreciate no, that? I don't, I don't think so. I, um, I was with Beans um, a few days ago, and that's one of the things I said I was being interviewed. I don't think any of the artists appreciated what they had because it just seemed like it was regular. Right. You know, they just thought that this is what happens at a label. It wasn't until, you know, these guys had different situations when they really was able to appreciate the rock. I mean, you know, Beans have I gave Beans a Bentley for his birthday. You know, he had, uh, you know, he had a, two Bentleys. He had a clothing line. He had movies, films, and he's only went in gold. Right. You don't see that every day. Right. You know. So he had a lot of opportunity there. That's a big. That's a big risk, though, because the music industry is not one of those industries that 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 breeds um, gratitude. Yeah. And, and 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 the more you look out for somebody, sometimes they expect yeah. more, man. Uh, yeah. Exactly. That's crazy. You've always been a businessman. Mm -hmm. The last job you had was at fourteen. Yeah. Right. What were you, what were you doing then? Um, that was uh, I was supposed to be cleaning the parking lot or something like that. It was um, uh, summer youth. Yeah, I worked there for about I think a week or two. What was your <laughs> What was your attraction to business? Or what sparked that? Um, the ability to create. So you know, I'm a creative um, first, uh, and I like to try to figure things out. So. Um, Something that always attracted me, I mean, whether it was clothing, whether it was bringing something to the table that guys didn't know about, was when guys were going left, I would go right. I always just wanted to be different. But who inspired you? Like, who inspired My brother. Your brother? Yeah, what, my what? brother Bob. Um, my brother Bob got killed in 2003. Uh, Jay talked about him on Lucifer and a um, few songs. People know him as Bob a lot, but he was a go-getter. And, um, you know, so early on, uh, he would pack bags. I'll be there. You know, he was four years older than me. Right. So I'll be in there packing bags. He would be selling papers. I would be out there selling papers. You know, we'll get, we borrow twenty dollars from our, our mom. You know, newspapers. I think was seventy five cent. We sell them for a dollar twenty five, and all morning from four in the morning. You know, we would be flipping, going back and forth to about eight nine in the morning, selling newspapers. Right, and then give our mother back. You know, her twenty dollars. Investment. Know. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So I learned that early on. What'd your parents do? Um, my mother worked at a telephone company, and my father, uh, he had a bar, but, you know, he was um, into drugs as well. Right. Selling. How'd you get the name Biggs? Uh, my man, uh, Tone, he owns Tony Minis right now. I was uh, 13, and doing the wrong things out, you know, uh, my brother, again, you know, and all his friends being younger, four years on, um, younger than these guys. And uh, they used to always say, you think you're too grown for your age. You think you're big. And bigs just kind of just kind of stuck. And uh, my man Tone started that. What was the first business you started? Um, uh, probably parties. Yeah, the Best Out. Um, best Out. Yeah. So I was a part of the Best Out when I was 14. And we all put up $100 and we had a party at the Cotton Club. And it was about 13 of us, and we had Kid Capri DJing. And we actually gave out 100 bottles of Moet to the first 100 girls. So, 
I mean, it, it was crazy at that time. We, we, <laughs> That's we, a lot of money. Yeah, we That's sold. A lot of we sold out. I mean, Mike Tyson came and paid fifteen hundred to get to the, through the back door. Mm. So we were young kids in Harlem, and we knew that we were doing something different. I mean, you know, for, for our age, we weren't we weren't getting money like the, you know the older dudes right. were. But what we were doing was so different that the the girls and all the guys they would want to come and hang out with us. So that we used to go to the rink, and uh, girls were saying, "Man, that 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 party was the best out. That was the best out." And then that that name stuck. So we had that going on for like the next four or five years. What, what kind of student were you, man? Student. Yeah. Um, when I paid attention, <laughs> I did good. Uh, end up um, graduating like you know um, second honors, but um, I, I really I hated school. It was, just, it was just boring to me. So, do you think you I was, like to go to school? Right. I, I hate to go to class. Do you think you were smarter than the the material that was being presented to you? Um, I'm not sure. I don't know. It was just, it, it, you know, I would just, I just like to just snap on the kids and just be in school every day. Is, you know, when I applied myself, I did okay though. You know, over the years, man, you've always played the back. Um, mm-hmm. But this year, man, you've been talking mm-hmm. a lot, man. And 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 when I'm listening to your interviews, I'm like, yo, you, you're brilliant. Like, you, your mind is brilliant. Like how it thinks and how you even present yourself. Did you always feel that you had something, or you were smarter than maybe some of your peers or the um, average man? No, I never thought that. Right. Uh, but the formula was Dame to be the mouthpiece. Jay to be, you know, the spokesperson for the for the music, and I was going to play the back. So we just stuck to the formula. That's all it was. You know, I always thought he was a shooter. <laughs> <laughs> Were you the shooter, man? <laughs> nah, speaking of shooter, we just uh, we about to start a new uh, line too called the shooter. Nice. The shooter, yeah. What is the shooter? shooter? It's about photography. Okay. You know, um, paying homage to all those people who create the content. Um, a lot of times, I mean, you walking in the clubs, you around. And then you don't even pay attention. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, you take take this flick and see you later. And these guys don't really get any credit, right? These guys are the real content builders. Yes. So, you know, Dave the and original. I. original. Yeah. So Dave and I had this idea. We said, yeah, you know, why not? Let's pay homage to all the guys who who are the creators of the content. You know, the the film and, uh, you know, and, and the stills. Visuals. So, yeah. So the shooter. It makes a lot of sense because, you know, photography has always been important mm-hmm. in the history of the rock, going back to Jonathan Mannion. Yeah, yeah. And when you look back on those iconic images right now mm-hmm. that are part of, you know, what's fueling your business now, it's like well, you couldn't do that. Yeah, Johnny Nunez. You know, Johnny Wale- Nunez. Wale- yeah, Waleek. Yeah, I mean, you know, Johnny went on the road with us around the world, you know. Were you in Paris, man, when it, when, when it got tight? Yeah, I was there. <laughs> Yeah, I got maced. Uh, I couldn't. I couldn't. <laughs> yeah. Actually, Johnny, I think, uh, pulled me through. Cause, yeah, because yeah, I couldn't even see. I got maced, and um, Johnny just grabbed my hand and just kind of walked me through the crowd. Yeah, we had Dame on the show, and he was talking about how like like Johnny was the the yeah. cat that yeah Johnny was had was his, fighting harder than with, everybody with his camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was, had the camera <laughs> waving, of, knocking people out with the camera and everything. Yeah, some somebody tapped me on my shoulder. I think it was like a sixty year old lady. I turned around and she just maced me ah. point blank. Damn. Yeah, it was crazy out there. It was like 150 people, and it was like three of us. Talking about remarkable individuals, how was it growing up with Dame? Um, The same. (laughs) Like a lot of people ask about Dame personality. It was the same. I I met Dame when I was 14, actually, um, you know, through my brother Bob. And he didn't really change much. You know, he just had, I guess, a little more power and money. um, But the personality was still the same. Right. Strong-minded individual. How was he when he got those deals? Because like uh-huh. I remember, like Dame must have been about nineteen. Yeah, when when yeah when his first deal, yeah, yeah, with, with original flavor and mm-hmm. future sound, and mm-hmm. I was like, yo, that's that's a young cat to be walking around with so much money. Like, yeah, how, how was how was Dame then? Though, yeah, hundred and fifty thousand dollars, I think it was. Yeah, something yeah, like definitely. That at the time. Him and him and Darian. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, we were so competitive back then, and at that time, that money wasn't that much right. <laughs> to you. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but you know, he couldn't front on me, but, uh, you know, to, to some of the other people in the crew, you know, you could see the, um, he was celebrating. Yeah. Um, did that inspire you? Cause you know, the, 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 the story is how you were big in the mm-hmm. streets. Um, did that inspire you? Did you want to get out of the streets um, at the time? Cause you were young. It, it I didn't really think about it. You right. know, when you're in that, in that mix, it's just day to day and you thinking about how to survive and then what's the next, the next move. Um, I had plans, um, you know, uh, but I didn't know that it would be music. 
Right. What were your initial plans? No, I'm saying to to leave. I didn't right. know what I would be doing, but you know, I had a retirement plan. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> yeah. So so when you see Dame mm-hmm. making legal money, mm-hmm. like does that spark something? Or y'all had no, a conversation? No, or? what what sparked it is we, he actually had a conversation with us. Um, it was the, all the best out. And we was on 142nd, and he was telling us that yo, know, we should all get in the music business together, and how we can build all these businesses, and how you know we could. Um, it's funny, we talked about amusement parks. We talked about all these things. He was like, man, the best out, like, look, we just doing it in Harlem. We could do this all over the world. And him and a friend of mine, um, they was arguing because he was saying, look, no, let me be the boss, and I'll just pay people. But Dame was talking about having a partnership. So that next day, um, I called Dame, uh, me and my brother Bob, and I started to spend more time with Dame and talking about some of the stuff he was doing. And that at that time is when I came I came on and started to find out a little more about the music business. I got on the road with him and uh Jay and, you know, would go with Jay while he's performing in front of twenty and thirty people um opening up for Al Scratch, Ill and Al Scratch. And uh, you know, and I got my first taste of the music business then. That was probably right before I can't get with that. Right. So was it being on the road because New York traditionally was not an independent label? town like we didn't mm-hmm. have independent labels mm-hmm. was it going out of town and seeing how much other cats were making in other regions down south it wasn't west? it was never about what they were making because right. we had so much money right you know um you know especially jay and myself so i mean i had so much money i didn't even it was just more or less to do something different you know i was just there hanging out it was just from um from a support standpoint right you know i would go there and be like where y'all gonna be don't worry, i'll bring four cases of crystal this and that you know and i i brought that lifestyle and with that, um, you know, I began to meet Jay friends, right? So then me and Tata became really cool, and me and Emery became me and cool. And, you know, me and Emery, you know, know we were both, you know, love cloth- clothing so much, we would go downtown to Soho and spend six and $8,000 every weekend on, you know, on, on sneakers and, and clothes. And that's how me and him became really cool. And we just started to build this, you know, this, this brothership between, you know, Brooklyn and Harlem. And a lot of guys, they just liked me and I liked them and they, we just gravitated towards each other. So it's this big crew of 15 to 20 people and then it's small cliques in that crew. And, you know, me, Tata and Emery probably hung out more than the others. Right. Now, we know the story about how no label wanted to sign Jay. Mm-hmm. Um, and we also know the story about how hungry Jay was, like the battles you talk about. Yeah. Like when he battled DMX, that's when he really convinced you. Yeah, that's that, when that, he that he was on on, an, on another yeah. level. Mm-hmm. But we don't hear about the invisible battles mm-hmm. that happened. I remember Dame telling me about, you know, the one cat that, that, that Jay or y'all felt he, he had to battle to really validate, validate himself on the streets was LL. Yeah, I wasn't there that day. I think it was... Um Actually, it might have been outside the Palladium. It was like I heard LL was walking to his car yeah, and they, and they yeah. ran up on him? Yeah, and he ran up on him, yeah. Um, actually, Tone Hooker was just telling me about that story the other day. But um, I wasn't there for that. But I heard, you know, Jay, you know. Jay got on yeah, him. Yeah, he got him. Yeah. He got and, him. And, and the story is Jay got at him so bad Damn. that LL's only response was, well, at least I got a deal. Yeah. And Jay would walk around with his own money to battle. Yeah. You know. You know, five, ten thousand dollars, and just welcome somebody. And be like, yo, you won battle. Anybody else? Any other names that that? Um, no, I wasn't there neither. But I know, you know, him and Big L, they went at it um, on the block. So that's be- what, before the the stretch and Barbito show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before that, so they brought uh, Jay uptown to battle, and Big L came down. It's like, oh, I know this guy. I'm not going to battle him, but I'll rhyme with him. Ah. Uh. And they went back and forth, and. When Jay left, you know, I, I remember coming to the block and everybody's like, yo, that dude is serious. Like, that's, he came to Harlem to battle Big L. Yeah. So, and, you know, they was like, yo, that's, you know, that's serious right there. What was your relationship with Big L? Um, I mean, Big L was my man. We went to junior high school together. So, you know, uh, um, Big L, McGruff, you know, Cam Mace, they all a block, of, you know, our home base was 141st Lennox and they from 140th and 139th. So, you know, we all went to school and just hung out with each other. When y'all started forming the label, what, did y'all ever consider signing Big L? We was going to sign Big L um, at the time when you <sighs> dropped Ebonics. And it was right before he got killed. Damn. So that single right there, we was just giving, we was just about to give him a single deal. And Yo. maybe a month, uh, two weeks, a month later, he got killed. Yo, King, can you imagine 
L and J on the same label? Like, yeah. it would have been too much, Vigs. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been too much, man. Yeah. How'd you hear about his passing, man? Um, I can't remember at the time, but, I, you know, uh, it, it was definitely um, something that hurt me, you know, because we were really cool. And, you know, like I said, I had more history with him. You know, I've known him since I was probably uh, 13. And, um, you know, to hear about that, you know, somebody so great, you know. A great, so young. Young, a great talent. And he wasn't really out there like that. It wasn't that. even meant for him. Yeah. So, it, you know, it, it, it hurt the whole Harlem. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, talk about, because when y'all started, man, y'all were very dedicated, you, Damon J, to wearing your rubber bands as a sign of <laughs> yeah. solidarity. solidarity. Let's, let's yeah. talk about that, man. Yeah. Like, y'all had the jewelry and everything, but it yeah. was like, when y'all rocked the rubber bands... It you know, seemed like that was more important than yeah. any other piece of jewelry that, that y'all had on. Yeah, that represented the circle of success. So that was something that we, um, you know, that was a code between all of us. And it was, uh, you know, Jay talked about it in one of his songs, everybody beat each other crutches. So yeah. if anybody ever fell off and lost some money, you know, if we had a million dollars, if it's 10 of us, you know, nine people would give this guy 100000 he'll have, you know, 900000 we'll all be equal again. So what happened? What happened to the rubber bands, man? <laughs> it's, it's fine. Well, I own the Circle of Success. That's um, that's one of my companies. So right. I still believe in it. Um, the first album, Reasonable Doubt, man, for for a debut album, for an unknown artist. Like I remember having to clear like Mary mm-hmm. and, and, and Big and all the labels. Like yo, who who, who the fuck is a J? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Um, and 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 Dame was on here before, and he talked about the relationships that he had with everybody mm-hmm. to be on that album. But one of the things, like I remember when I when I came to this to the to the office one day, and and Dame was going crazy over "Ain't No Nigga," mm-hmm. like he, I, like he was going crazy over the album, mm-hmm. but he was really going crazy over "Ain't No Nigga." Like how important was that record? I mean, it was crazy. You know, for, first I remember even trying to get the the beat made in jazz, having to punch the machine a hundred times just to you know to to do it and. Um, and then Jay asking him to to, to, to sing on a hook, <laughs> and I remember it sounding funny at first because you know when somebody you know, just like when you know somebody back then, and you like you rap, like come on, that it just it just sounds funny. So you rap hear, really good, yeah. But then then hearing jazz sing on on ain't no, um, but what what Foxy brought to it, it was just something different. I mean, the the record took off um, immediately. You know, what I mean, it was a great street record. And it was something that um, helped, you know, she had a little more notoriety at that time, too. So it helped pro- propel Jade. So it gave him some listeners so people to kind of hear, you know, Dead Presidents and other stuff that we had, I think, was on the uh, B-side. I remember being at, at, at this party. I think it was at the Madison. Mm-hmm. Um, that, the album had just come out. And when Flex put on Ain't No. Yeah. And I saw how the yeah, crowd, he had like he had the record. women running yeah. to the dance floor. I was like, oh, they, y'all are out of here. Yeah. Do you, do you think the album would have popped without that record? Um, it's hard to say. That that was the you know that that was the biggest record on the album, especially for radio. And you know, shooting a video in Miami, you know, Big came to the video. He was in the video as yep. well. You know, what I'm saying duffel bags full of money going in and out the bank. You know, recreating that whole Scarface thing. I mean, we had so much fun at that time too. It's 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 hard to say because that was the biggest record. Yeah, so many people were instrumental in, in, in building the label from the early days, like Clark Kent and, mm-hmm. and, and the whole nine. But we never really talked Irv. about Irv. Yeah, Irv. Like, what was Irv's involvement initially? He was a, he was a DJ. So he DJ for uh for for Jay, and he actually introduced he helped um build that bridge with us and Angie Martinez. So he introduced us to him, and um, Irv was helping us out with radio a lot. So, you know, he made the introduction to Kev Lyles when we went to talk to him about um, paying Kev for radio, and then Kev wanted to <laughs> sign us, and he was like, we don't, we, don't, we don't need to be signed. Right, right, right. You know, we got a paper bag for you if you want to take this and, you know, and get us some spins. <laughs> um, um, I believe with Steve Rifkin as well. Um, you know, we went there, and he had a um, lock on uh, that video channel, and then um, also with radio as well. But Irv was, you know, I mean, he did Can I Live yeah. as well. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. We don't talk about how instrumental Ski was. Like, oh, Ski man. was like, he was like the initial in-house Yeah, exactly. Producer. So, yeah, and there's a lot of records that didn't make the album that, that Ski did. Uh, but, yeah, definitely Ski was, you know, that's where Jay would just go to, his, you know, his place up there um, in Sedgwick and um, off uh, uh, by Fordham Road. 
uh, I mean Kingsbridge, and you know he would create a lot with with Skeet. They had a they had a good um, you know it, it was a good synergy going between both of them, and they, they they made a lot of good music. When y'all made the record, was it a concerted effort for Jay to dumb down his style for reasonable doubt? Because people didn't understand his style. I don't think I don't think it was done like like that purposely, but it's just that the tracks, you know it. It, it called for a different style. And at that time, Jay was looking to impress us, his friends. Like, that that album was for us. Mm. You know, uh, it was more, you know, him being in the studio. And, I mean, you, you could be going with Jay, you know, downtown to, to go get a pizza, and he starts spitting politics as usual in the car and cannot live and all these stuff. And you just like, what? Like, you ready to crash. Like, this dude, you got... In the car, what you just spit in acapella, all these great <laughs> records, you know what I'm saying? And Jay would just go on and on and on and on. So I remember, you know, some I would call my friends on three-way and be like, yo, Jay, spit that joint again. It was the evils. Mm. So he would, you know, do it like I call him all the time. Yo, call, yo call, I'm going to call you back. Call somebody else. Yo, Jay, spit that again. The evil, you know, he ain't doing that no more. But it was a good <laughs> 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 You know, I heard you mention on, on um, with Genius Rob Markman, that was a great interview. Mm. Um, you mentioned some of your... Uh, favorite songs on the album mm. um to me my favorite song on the entire album is, is regrets because mm-hmm. it's it's a haunting it's yeah. like it's the first time you hear jay really get yeah introspective mm-hmm. on that man and it became the formula yeah right so every last song on the album he would you know kind of open it up you know mama loved me you know uh and every everyone right every song so it became something that people try to emulate like oh, i'm gonna have something with an intro and then i'm gonna have this song with just you know this open book at the end so he was even copied to that level of a sequence <laughs> how did y'all discover um we can't forget pain in the ass man how did y'all yeah. discover <laughs> pain in the ass man? it's funny um i didn't remember he just told me just the other day that he was interning in the office and he would curse people out all the time and I would laugh. He said, so he was like, yo, you was the serious guy in the office. So when I made you laugh, I kept doing it. And he said one day I was like, yo, put him in the studio. And he's like, that's how it started. And then he started doing all these skits. So he was thanking me the other day because now he's doing voiceovers and things like that. He was like, yo, this is all from you, Biggs. I, I didn't even know that. That's crazy, man. Yeah. That's crazy. Y'all was so competitive. Y'all was so raw back then. And yeah. Jay, you know, was just so hungry. Like, mm. And back then, rap was more about complex subliminals, right? Yeah. So how do y'all feel when y'all hear Tupac jump out the window yeah. and call out Jay's name? Um, I mean, we went right to him. Yeah. Yeah, so it was actually at the MTV Awards. Literally, went they went to the seat looking for Tupac. And they couldn't find him, you know, and then they went and stepped to Shug. I didn't, I ended up not going to that show. So Damon, Jay stepped to Shug and Shug act like he didn't know who Jay was. Right. And, um, you know, once Tupac passed, you, you know, we were sad, but, you know, Jay really wanted that battle. So we, we still did a song, though, called Dead or Alive. Yeah, Dame You know was, what I'm saying? Just yeah. took a little pop shot. Yeah, yeah. But Dame was saying, like, y'all recorded some crazy. Yeah. Now he had some shit and he, had, he actually did it at the Apollo. Um, with uh, with Biggie, yeah. So him and Biggie uh, performed with Apollo, and Jay spit the the song that was gonna come out. Y'all still have that recorded? Nah. <laughs> what you, what happened yeah. to that that record? Yeah, I don't, I don't know if we recorded. I know Jay had the verse. I'm not sure if we put it to anything. And then he just kind of just did the dead or alive. You know, part of the the, the glorious history also is mm-hmm. like you know being a fly on the wall. You know how y'all moved with or clashed mm-hmm. with other crews, and you know. When I hear Dame give somebody respect, I know that's coming from a genuine place. Mm. And and Dame said, like, the only crew in New York City that he didn't want no problems with no more was Terror Squad. Like, y'all was really in with the Terror Squad back then. Yeah. Um, I, I never heard him say that. Right. Um, I don't <laughs> uh, We We had a lot of problems with them, though. Um, but it what was, was... What was the problem? You know, just... I don't even know, truthfully. Competitiveness, um, right? Yeah, it was just, you know, things going on in the club here and there. There was an incident one one or two times, but Dame got hit in the head with the champagne bottle. Yeah, but that wasn't from that was from Keith Murray. I had um I ended up knocking Keith Murray out in mm. in a club um, cuz he hit my car at the uh tunnel. And what you was, mean he hit your car? 
I had just bought a legend. This is what you know before we started. Right. And somebody hit my car, so I got out and he got out and was like, Yo, I'm Keith Murray. I got that song. I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. So it was like maybe ten of them. Right. So. And he was surra- they surrounded me. And I remember him talking a lot of shit. So I was just kinda like laughing. So when they left, I called Dame. I was like, Who's Keith Murray? Like I need to see him. So we was going everywhere where he was performing, and we never caught up to him. So we, I think it was at um, Sweetwaters. Uh, Sauce was performing that day, and then Jay um, tapped Dame and was like, yo, I got him. He's right here. So Jay was in front of me talking to him, so I moved Jay out the way, knocked him out, mm. and then somebody came, and then they hit Dame on the head with a bottle. So that's what happened. Then the whole crew ran outside, and they stood outside on jumping on cars, throwing glass at us yo you seem so calm right now was you was you a, was you a savage man uh, and, I, and i'm not trying to glorify it i'm just trying to I, I pull out the flesh out i the mean man. if there was a problem any right. any one of us handle it yeah. yeah um one of the pivotal things that y'all did throughout the careers when y'all jumped off the um the bad boy tour yeah the bad boy tour was so big like mm-hmm. one of the best shows i've ever seen mm-hmm. and then in the midst of it y'all jumped off like, yeah. how did that come about, man? Um, Jay just wasn't comfortable. You know, he wasn't comfortable opening up for, you know, some of these people he was opening up for. He didn't, they didn't like the treatment. I didn't really go to much shows, but something did good come out of it. That's how we got Hard Knock Life. Right. So, what I think was uh, K. Capri used to play it, uh, you know, in between the sets, the beat. And then they, you know, found out. And then, you know, uh, I think it was 45 Kings that did it. And then Jay came and then, you know, another monumental song, right? That, that yeah. yeah. And it's funny that wasn't the biggest song on that. Um, Can I get it? Was the biggest song on mm, that yeah. on Hard Knock. Yeah, it's just hard. Um, um, hard Knock Life was so different. People thought that that was the biggest record. So I remember getting about four or five thousand spins. But um, Can I Get a was probably like six or seven or close to eight thousand. You know, Can I Can I Can I was like that was a huge record. Like the huge. numbers don't lie. Yeah. But um, yeah. Hard Knock. 11 weeks, number one. That was, you know, we saw 6 million. That's when we knocked it out the park. But Hard Knock subtly took Jay to a different level. I remember yeah. being in Mexico, mm-hmm. and I was in the elevator with a um, middle-aged couple. And I'm hearing the woman humming. It's a Hard Knock life. And I was like, yo, she knows that record. Mm-hmm. Jay trying to, uh, he, he kind of changed the game, too, with that, with how it was presented. Because I think he performed it at an award show. Like uh, for the first time, no, no one ever heard the record. No, you thinking of um, H to the Izzo. Oh, right. My my, my apologies. Was, yeah. But still, even that. Like, yeah, you know but that was in the first that, time. Yeah, he yeah. did H to the Izzo for the first. Because I remember, I remember Andre three thousand jumping up out of seat and going crazy. You know, for that song. That's what I was like, damn, these people. You know, to hear something for the first time. You know, usually it take a couple listens and and live at that nah, to that see was... that the reaction of the crowd and other artists. I mean, I. I, you know, I, I was still looking up to Andre Three Thousand. Like today, he's probably one of my, you know my favorite um, right. artists. Time, yeah. yeah. Um, so to see them jumping out their seat and going crazy for that, I mean, you know, the energy was just crazy. You know, everybody's just jumping and pointing, and we's like, oh, oh, we got another one. How did y'all know to start making records that only wouldn't resonate in New York, but like you know, open up the sounds to the South and the West? Like, how did y'all know that? To do that, y'all um, consciously did that, right? Yeah, hip hop. Mm-hmm. So, um, what up, hip hop? Yeah, my little brother, hip hop. Uh, He's who, a good dude, man. Yeah, he A and R. Uh, you know, probably twelve of J albums. He did the bulk of everything at Rockefeller. He found uh, Just Blaze. He found Kanye West. Uh, no ID. Uh, all these people <laughs> um, that that put us on that pedestal where we were. And hip hop. He actually that was him on a, um, to come up with the hook for Big Pimpin. Um, that was his idea. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times Jay have these uh, these records, and sometimes he he'll have the lyrics for them in hip hop. Like I have an idea, He'd be like all right, so yeah, do what you do what you do. But uh, you know, hip hop, you know, also his you know to bring uh, UGK on as well. That was um, all him. So we attribute a lot of that to him. That's dope. Yeah. Um, loyalty is so important to y'all. Loyalty was always so important to y'all. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things that hurt me like like mm-hmm. i always want to see a battle i oh you know what i'm saying i think you know we hip-hop is such a competitive sport it's mm-hmm. a competitive sport mm-hmm. but it hurt me when um when it got public with jay and jazzo mm-hmm. like when when that happened like how did that feel to you man um i mean it was 
being inside the camp, we knew it was something bubbling for a long time. Right. And, uh, I mean, it was just little pop shots going here and there. And then Jay would have, you know, Jay, as he always addressed it on the album. Right. <laughs> and it's just kind of like, you know, when Jay addresses something because he has that platform, it's like, you know, the samurai sword going through your stomach and yeah. going side to side. You know, you really feel it. So, um, I mean, we never want to see anything um, come out that's happening internal, you know, with us. We always kind of try to keep things um, between ourselves. But, uh, you know, it's so much history there. Yeah. I mean, that's beyond me. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah that, that had, 89. That, right. Did that, like, did that affect him, though? Like, was, did that really hurt him? When you say hurt. Like, just who? Jay. Jay, like, um, did it really hurt that? I'm not sure. Right. I'm not sure. Yeah. That's crazy. Um. Let's jump up, man. Like, you make all this money. You create all mm-hmm. of these. You create an empire, mm-hmm. right? What made you jump back into the drug game? Uh, well, it wasn't really jumping back into the drug game like that. I, I, I thought I'd seen what was happening. and With regard to I, marijuana. And legalization? Yeah, yeah. So I was going out to buy dispensaries in California. So I had a line of dispensaries that I was trying to buy. And at the same time, I was... Um, speaking to the farmers and I was like oh yeah I could just buy all these cribs as well out here and then sell direct to the dispensaries you know the medical marijuana and in doing that I had friends in uh in New York and they were like yo you know hook me up with those guys and so I'm like yeah that ain't no problem yeah I'm speaking to them anyway so in connecting them on the phone uh the guy that um fr- you know that I was connecting he was being watched mm. so I got caught in a conspiracy Talk about the day you got arrested, man. Mm-hmm. Like, like surprising. It was like it was crazy to me. You like, know? like what, what, what was the day like? What were you doing? No, uh, I probably just smoked about uh, ten joints, uh, was <laughs> knocked out, and uh, my wife was saying, uh, "Did you hear that?" And I was like, "No." And then she looked outside. She was like, "It's police outside." I was like, "All right." She was like, "No, they're running up here." I'm like, "What?" So you know, the feds is you know, I look out the window is. I don't know, 20, 30 cars. Um, they knocking on the door. And I remember telling them, I'm like, yo, go downstairs, open the door. And I just had my hands up. I'm like, look, my son's in the house. And um, they actually went in there, woke him up with guns. Um, he was uh, 13 at the time. And I didn't, I still, I didn't know what it was for. Right. It was just like, they was like, yeah, we know about this. And I was like, like, what, what are you talking about? So they told me I will find out when I get down the station. When I got down there, I started to see people that I knew, but I still wasn't put it putting it together. Right. I was like, but why am I here? Right. You know, and it wasn't until my lawyer explained it to me. And I was like, well, all right. Like, it still don't make any sense. I was like, I didn't do any of that. Right. And um, I mean, I've took a lie detector test that came back 99.9% correct, but they just went in that. Um, they said it was inadmissible. So um, because I chose not to talk. Um, and, and they, they chose to punish you. Yeah. So soldier of war, see now it's legal, or, you know, mm-hmm. most states, especially California now. So it was for something that didn't happen because they said it was, I conspired to do it. Right. You know, how does that make you feel, man? Um, I think the journey was good for me. Right. You know, I needed to sit down. I needed to reflect and what came out of it, um, made me a better person. How bitter were you initially, man? Um, I wasn't really that bitter. Uh, you know, so much happened to me in my past. I was just like, man, maybe this is something, you know, obviously if uh, something like that would have happened to me years ago, I'd have probably been gone for life. Right. So it was just like, look, I'll just sit down and just, you know, I mean, I'm familiar with the process. You know, you just got to sit down and do the time. Um, Are you planning or can you get back in the industry? Because it, it's, it's mm-hmm. fucked up that, that people with records can't get in that industry, right? I'm not even sure. Right. Yeah. Are you interested in getting in that industry? Not really. Now you uh, walked away from it? Yeah, you know, I'm um, you know, that was something at the time. Uh I'm with uh I you know, I repartnered with uh my man DG right here who, you know, we had a company before me him Damon and I um, right. called Native and the things that we are doing right now, I think is going to be groundbreaking. It's crazy, man, how th- this thing is becoming legal before our eyes, but a whole generation of us got locked up for that. Yeah. It's crazy. Crazy. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Um So J War. Yeah. Yo, I remember Dame lecturing me on how y'all was so anti-weed. 
Yo, it was so anti weed. Yeah. Like, like Dame was like, yo, anybody yeah, who we smokes were. weed is yeah. weak. And yeah. We not yeah. fucking with. Like, how'd y'all start smoking weed? It happened for me at Big Pimpin'. Yeah. Yeah, actually, me and then we was at the Delano, and then uh, Dame and I, we had some. Uh, we had two bungalows that was right next to each other, and then we end up smoking a joint, and it just changed our life. And after that, we smoked another one, another one, and then, you know, we ate everything in the room, <laughs> and we started ordering from food across the street, and we stood there for two days, smoking and partying in the room, and after that, it was, yeah. That, oh, was, that was the start of it. That was the start of yeah. it. Fourth of November. Yeah. Let's talk about the brand, man. Mm-hmm. Like, let's talk about mm-hmm. you know what you're doing because you got so many brands that we've already spoken about. Yeah, like the Fourth of November. Yeah, Fourth of November um, was something that uh, I kind of ran into. Um, my partner Radu had presented me with a situation uh, when they had a uh, they had a deal. They had the name and everything in place, and they um, they had distribution, but they was lacking funding. So uh, me and my partner Chip, we we funded the company. Actually, on the 4th of November, it was like a week before that. It was just so crazy. And, um, you know, it's been received really, really well, you know. So it's a, it's a denim line. And actually, we just went in the stores this week. Congratulations, so, man. Yeah, so. Um, Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Across the country. Across the country, yeah. That's, that's dope, man. Um, and it's doing really well, especially online. So, you know, we have a lot of, we had, you know, uh, all these um, photos and stills and, you know, this campaign that we're about to shoot with uh, Nell Pla. Um, she's um, going to lead that. She she just did that um, cinematic campaign that we did with uh, with Rock 96 and that whole launch. So, um, I mean, it's, it's just great things happening, man, 4th of November. Yo, why are you so fortunate, man? Like, what makes you so fortunate? <laughs> Seriously, man, because a lot you hear mm-hmm. a lot of people mm-hmm. start businesses, and and that's why I asked you earlier about mm-hmm. what's your relationship with money because yeah. some people get it, some well, people understand that even that spiritual, yeah. like money is energy. I think it's my relationship. So, because me and Radu, as you know, he's known Dame since he was six. Um, because of my relationships that I've had with people and the way I've always treated them, um, people always, you know they like to do business with me, you know, um, me and DG, you know, once we reconnected, it was 90 minutes <laughs> and we was like, okay, we're back in business. You know, um, I met, uh, Anel, you know, even though we, we knew, uh, what's up, uh, Anel? Tell, tell us what's yeah, up. Yeah. Even though we did uh business before, I mean, you know, we knew each other, but I mean, after one meeting, Anel was in house. That was it. It was like, so, the importance of what I what I like to do is build a great team, right? And to be with people that are smarter than me in categories that's that I may not know about, and I know what I bring to the table. So it's about having that formula again, and you know, and just following the blueprint. So everybody had, you know, we strategize, we think about a lot, um, a lot, and what's going to happen in 2017? You know, when we mash culture and start bringing brands outside of the box, and what do you mean brands that are yeah, like what um, kind of brands? Like no, no names or what kind of brands? Like Master Dynamics, uh, Astle and Kern, uh, uh, who's that? Polar, Polar, uh, Polar stuff, Polar stuff. Um, I mean, so you're uh, not only creating, but you're acquiring. Yes. So you know, a lot of people talk about collaborations, but we're the collaborators. That's crazy, man. Yeah. You know, going back, man, to 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 the to the to the last days of the rock, mm-hmm. right? Like, what was the first thing you saw that was like, "Yo, something's not right"? Um, us probably just not spending as much time as we did, um, um, as the beginning of the label. So everybody started to kind of branch off and do things, and that you know, when you don't spend as much time with each other, you start thinking a little differently. Right. And um, sometimes you might do things. Um, without uh checking with somebody else you know with your partners right and saying like all right this is okay you know this person ain't here and here and i'm doing this um probably that um just not us being on the same page what were you thinking like you you said y'all y'all start thinking different but what Mm -hmm. were you thinking man um i mean there was so much going on at that time you know like i said we 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 just had started native we had um, Armadale Vodka, you know, uh, Block Savvy. I started, the, um, you know, the tech division. You were in it early, huh? Yeah. So Facebook just had about 10,000 people. MySpace sold for $580 million. 
and I was trying to get into um, in the tech. So we figured we can use the database with all the um, use, you know, all the people that we have from the from the music and populate the website. So it was these three D rooms that we would do, and then we had savvy dollars, and it was all interactive, and people get rewarded for being on the site, right. which we thought was different because on all these other sites you just spend time, but you don't get anything for it. So, I mean, I was I was thinking about what's next. Right, you were building, yeah. and and were you guys so confident that the bond was so strong that nothing could happen? Uh, I I don't I don't think it was a confidence thing. You know when the the further years and years got um, past, those, those same thoughts aren't what you're thinking about, right. you know, because you're just in a different space. Right. So early on, when people ask you those questions, it's like, come on, never. Right. You know, but, you know, people kind of outgrow each other as well. Of course. You know? So, you know, it's just like for me right now, I'm just in a different space, right. you know what I mean? Spiritually, mentally, uh, physically, um, everything. So um, it's, a, it's an unfortunate thing, but, Anyway, the music company was going to be sold regardless. Right. And that's what I don't think a lot of people knew. You know, once we got into that, we knew that in, you know, five or six years that the company be sold. We just happened to have an ex- a three-year extension. Right. Was So it was inevitable that yeah. it was going to happen. Mm-hmm. But looking back on, on how it happened, do you ever think, damn, I could have done something different? Yeah. Um, I, I, I would definitely say that. Um, I mean, I think all of us would probably um, say that uh, and wish that it was um, something— that wasn't so public. Right. It was something that and it was, got nasty. You know, yeah, just yeah, th- yeah. It seemed it seemed yeah, it seemed to get a little nasty. But um, I think that um, time passes and everybody's um, over it. And you know, I speak to you know, I spoke to Dame when I was at in L.A. Um, after that pop up shop, and I speak to Jay. You know, a lot off a lot more often. But um, you know, we all in a great space right now, and we know that we created history together, right. and that can't be taken away from us. Right. So. You know, that's why I'm just doing what I'm doing right now. I'm celebrating. You know, one of the annoying things is when you're in a relationship that people identify you mm-hmm. with. You know, even though time has passed, you know, we, we accept it. We still wonder, like, I wonder how it would be if they ever yeah. came back. Would y'all ever do something? Have y'all ever talked about that? I don't think there's no coming back. Right. You know, there's, there's nothing really to come back for. Right. You know, we, the relationship is something that I cherish. And... I just think that everybody's doing something so different. Um, it's not about doing it together. You know, we've built separate, you know, different teams. And, you know, I would always support them, and I get support from them for whatever I'm doing. So I think it's just, you know, it's a, it's a good place like that. Yeah. i seen a video with you and Beans. How's he doing, man? Beans is good, man. Yeah. It was it was real good seeing him. That was the first time I seen him uh, last week. We spoke a few times, but right. I haven't seen him face to face. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's it's rough, you know, when you see, you know, the cats that 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 are um, they're just un, unbeatable, yeah. and then you see them fallible, man. It's like, like yeah. is, well, is he good, man? Yeah, he's good. It's you know, I, I was, I guess I'm probably more hurt about him losing his voice, you right. know, yeah. for somebody to be the core of the rock, um, and you know his 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 strongest thing. He can't. It's it's hard for him to make those records right now. Because you know where you know where he's at with his voice, and he was uncomfortable with it for a while. Right. It was actually Tone Hooker that gave him the confidence, said to just go ahead and do it. And it's funny because when I speak to him, I'm like, "Yo, Beans, when I speak to you, I don't hear nothing. Like, why can't I hear that in a record?" Right. And you know, um, so I may do a few things with him, you know, to just try to give him some direction. That's dope, and man. you know, I know he said he has a, a good body of work done, maybe a, a double a double CD mm. that he's looking to put out. Right. But, I mean, everybody misses Beans, man. We yeah. just want to hear the music. That's what I told him. I sent him a message every once in a while and just say, yo, look, man, I love you, man. I just hope everything's good, man. Make music. Yo, you got to describe for us, man, him and Jay going back and forth on those records, man. Like, 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 <laughs> like, yeah, like, mean, like, like, yeah. like, like, how did you not fucking have a heart attack yeah. when you see Jay and then, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like and then, on, and, once again, it's on. Right. Yeah, that's one of my, my favorite songs, probably one of the favorite ever, you know, done at The Rock. Um, I mean, Beans, he would push Jay, and Jay would push him as well. You know, we always wanted um, Beans to get on a record because we know that Jay would always take it up to another level. Right. But even at that level that he took it to, you you don't walk away like, damn, Jay killed him. It's just like, damn, I don't know. He's, he's you know, neck it, and it, neck. Yeah, it leaves Beans you, was on your neck, yeah, Jay. Yeah, it leaves you guessing, you yeah. know, and Beans being Beans without kind of crossing over to nothing. It's just Jay being Jay. 
I mean, that's that's one of the things that we love with The Rock, man. We had we had all that in-house, you know. When you got Kanye in one room making Just beats, Blaze. Just Blaze in the Guru. other room. You got Guru there. You got Bink and playing pool trying to get in. Right. <laughs> I mean, it was a great time. Man. Yo, how competitive was it, man? Especially with the producers. Yeah. Oh, the producers. Was, were they more competitive yeah. than the artists? Oh, my gosh, man. You know, because especially when his album done and Kanye come and play all these songs and then you hear Just Blaze go back in the B room <laughs> and then come back, you hear the drums and he come back in there. It, it was crazy. You know, so even when we, um, I forgot what album, um, Beans just finished. I think it was his second album. And all those songs, um, that Jay, what album was that? What uh, uh, he gave him like five songs, um, but they was all meant for Beans. Um, never change, never change, and yeah. all that. What album was that? That's a blueprint. Name? Yeah, the blueprint. Blu- blueprint. Yeah, yeah. So those four or five songs, those are all meant for Beans. He missed it by Damn, like yeah, by like a crazy. day. We just wrapped up the album. That's crazy, man. You know, I think America has to thank y'all too, man, because mm-hmm. I remember. 9-11 having mm. the blueprint yeah and just trying to make sense of what was going on yeah. and the only thing that kept me tethered to like normalcy mm-hmm. was just being in that car yeah and absorbing that and i think that's you know we don't yeah, talk about that it was crazy we was on a air we, i mean we were on american airlines um nine ten, and i remember it raining we was on a uh um I mean, maybe two hours before we took off. Right. And then I got to L.A. So funny. I just I had to go a month without smoking because I was taking insurance tests. So right. got to L.A. and we was at the peninsula and my man ran in my room like you see what happened. And, and you know, turning on the news and seeing all this commotion. I mean, it was crazy. We was there. I mean, Q-Tip couldn't make the video. Um, I think Bismarck, which, Naomi which, which, Campbell. Which video was it? Girls, Girls, Girls. Girl. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were there about to shoot our biggest video. We oh, had that's every funny. model to play one of those girls, and nobody couldn't make it. It was funny. That That's when we started flying private jet. So yeah, that they, was like that's it. Yeah, because they flew us back out private, and right. then like the next five, six years, we never flew commercial. All of the things that y'all did, man, what, what was your... What was your proudest moment? Like, was it was it the summer st- summer stage? You know, summer jam stage. Like, what was your proudest? Like, your proudest um, golden memory? I think probably winning our first Grammy mm. because uh, my mother had just passed um, for Hard Knock Life, and you know, growing up, she would watch. I would watch the Grammys with her every year, wow. and you know, to be on that stage and you know to see the um, to know that she couldn't be there to see you know us accepting that Grammy. Um, I thought about a lot, you know, during that time and especially on the stage. Uh, I think that was, uh, for me, you know, one of my biggest moments. You know, last question, man, for for this new generation. Mm -hmm. And and I know you've been watching and appreciating this new generation. Mm -hmm. But, like, what would you tell them, like, the attitude that maybe added? Like, do you think anything needs to change in terms of, like, the attitude or, like, how certain cats are? Because it just seems so messy right now. Um, And I'm not not trying to be that old dude because I definitely enjoy and appreciate you know the current wave mm-hmm. but you know just how y'all y'all was so regimented and sometimes it just seems so sloppy man like yeah well it it probably goes back to like what you said um them not appreciating what they have and that's what i tell people a lot of times that this isn't going to last long right so you know they have some deals that they get that's a little bit outside the box you know and they get comfortable with the you know three four five thousand dollar walkthroughs and they think that that faucet isn't never going to stop right what i would tell them is start stacking put your money up start thinking about other businesses because it's going to come to a halt yes and it's going to be faster than you think it's going to be at a time when you thought you was the hottest and then you put out that next you know record then everything just falls away and you don't know what to do at that moment so start thinking about other businesses. You're the silent partner. You've always been the silent partner. Yeah. But people don't know how many records you're on. Like how many records you're on. Like how many records are you on? Yeah, I, I never counted, but a, a lot of people, they didn't know who I was. So, you know, they didn't know that I'm also Hoffa. So Jay refers to me, you know, we just talking about that J-A-Y dash Hoffa, the past, present, the future, proper. Mm-hmm. Um so Cam talks about me a lot. Uh, Jim Jones talked me a lot. Fab got me on a new I record. I love the way that I love that record. Yeah, what would you think of that record, yeah. man? Kanye, Big Brother. My Big Brother was Big's brother. Yes, then, you know. But um, I, I don't know what the count is, but it's it's a lot out there. It's in the double digits. Yeah, 
Oh yeah, and push your push teeth. Your yeah, push your teeth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. you're a legend, man. Yeah. You, you, you realize that, right? You realize that? <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm a humble soul, man. There you go, man. Yeah. Thanks. Yo, man. Thank you, man. Thank like, you. Like, thank you. It's good to have you on the show, man. It's, it's crazy that I used to see you so many times, but we didn't. We never spoke. Yeah, no. We yeah. we, we yeah. never spoke, man. This is this is the longest conversation I, we ever yeah. had. I was truly the silent partner. Yeah, that's the, truly, right? <laughs> Yo, we're, we're, we're good seeing you, man, and continued yeah. success, man. And, yeah. and and I love your spirit, dude. Like, yeah. I, I feel it, and I love it, man. Oh, thanks. I just want to add, you know, um, we got new product coming okay. out. On rock96.com, we got a new product coming out on 4th of November. So it's 4th of November, spelled out, dot com. And I'm at The Rock 96 on Instagram and Kareem Biggs on Facebook. Okay, very well. Thanks so much. Thank you. King. Throw up the diamonds, man. Throw up the diamonds, man. Holla. Thoughts? Um... Cause you, you was a shorty coming up under the, yeah. the, the rock era, man. Yeah, I was, man. It's, it's, it's bugged out because when you talk about B.I.G., Nas, J., that just that whole shit. X. I, mm-hmm. I, I, I really don't think we as fans outside of buying the music that we don't appreciate it enough, man. And mm-hmm. sit in the room <clears throat> with somebody that was there in the creation, like we throw up the diamonds. Mm-hmm. That's that's you, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And um, I don't think we appreciate you guys enough. I don't think hip hop, the culture. Mm. <clears throat> I don't know. If we know how to do that shit. Yeah, that's why I'm giving them a history still, lesson. This now. is all new. Like yeah. we, we ain't have a rock before the rock. Yeah, you feel me? There wasn't no gold. No, is that the golden era? I don't know. Y'all always have. I mean, there's argument. so many golden eras. Mm. Well, at nineties, yeah. there was nothing. That was it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But I truly, I don't even know what I was trying to say, but. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you, and um, I just hope you guys do more shit, man. Yeah, thanks. And whatever we could do to be be a, 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 a facilitate, yeah, facilitate all of that, mm. man. Please. All right. Good yeah, luck yeah. out there. Yeah, 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 yo, yeah. Yo, internets, man. You know what it is. Dream, dream those dreams, and then man up, woman up, and live those dreams. Because a life without dreams is black and white, and the universe flows in technicolor and surround sound. Okay, I like that. Thank you. <laughs> we gotta keep that in. <laughs> This episode of the Combat Jack Show was produced by Jonathan Mena, executive produced by A. King and Chris Morrow, engineered by Samir Karan and recorded in the Engine Room Audio Studio in downtown Manhattan. This is an official Loudspeakers Network's production.